I will be collecting these. Make sure you write these down. All right, so my name is Janiqua. I'm Maria. And my name is Stephanie, and we're Dental Hygiene students from Columbus Technical College. And we're here today to talk to you about smoking and the effects that it has on your oral cavity. Um, have any of you considered a career in dentistry of any kind? Yes, no, maybe not. Well, we're going to talk to you a little bit about today. Um, dentistry and dental hygiene was originally established um, by a dentist who felt like there was no in-between person to teach the general public how to care for their oral needs. So they were having all these patients who were coming in with really severe oral diseases, and these dentists were overwhelmed. And a lot of the diseases that they had were preventable. So this dentist decided to come up with dental hygiene as an intermediary um, for patients to learn to prevent these She'll be down in just a minute. Right. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> and you, the microphone really helps because of the way the room is, so you just speak right into it. Okay, so there's side effects of tobacco use is shifting teeth. So it's like it won't be that pretty smile of your teeth and start shifting in place. You can lose your teeth, which you'll have bone loss. You can have oral lesions such as cancer. You'll have receding gums, dry mouth. You can have a black, scary tongue. Delayed wound healing, halitosis, which is bad breath. You'll get an altered sense of taste, so you won't be able to taste anything as well as you did before, and the same with the sense of smell. You may get periodontal disease, which is a, there's two types, there's gingivitis and periodontitis, and gingivitis is just your gums. You can heal it up, it's reversible, but periodontitis is going to take away your bone and your gums, and there's no way to reverse it. And you also may have stains. Thank you. 
you can see he has missing teeth, he has stains, he has the shifting teeth, and by looking at it, I would guess he has had bad breath also. Okay, so now we're going to talk about cannabis, marijuana. So it's very addictive due to tetrahydrocannabinol, they're known as THC, and that's the ingredient that makes marijuana addictive. heard of vaping okay do you know anyone who vape a lot of people okay so to vape is to inhale and exhale the vapor produced by an electronic cigarette that means it could be like the vaporizer um e-cigarette vape pen all of that will be uh, even a hookah pen that's still considered vaping so it was originally created to help people quit smoking so people thought if i move on from the cigarette to vaping it's healthier and it's really not Okay, and so, you know, I think it's healthy, but it's really not, okay, because it still has that nicotine in it, which can cause addiction. Okay, so vaping liquids can be made to taste like candy, fruit, ice cream, or anything that's like, that tastes good. And that's how people get addicted, because it tastes good, but they don't, they don't realize that they're also inhaling that nicotine. All right, so vaping is actually not um, FDA regulated. So marijuana is FDA regulated, but vaping is not. So that says a lot of so there hasn't been a lot of research done on vaping, so I don't, um, I tell people not to vape, especially my patients, I tell them it's not a better option because it's like enough, enough research just has not been done. We don't know what it's gonna do to you 10, 20, 30 years from now, okay? So toxins have been found in e-cigarettes um, in several studies, including uh, the, the um, ingredients that's um, found in antifreeze and lead, nickel, and chromium, and that's not good at all. Yes. <laughs> So nicotine containing vapes, they constrict the blood vessels, and you, you don't want anything to constrict your blood vessel because it, it kind of helps that blood flow in your body and in your gums. Okay? So if that when your blood vessels are being constricted, it reduces blood flow and it can prevent your from mouth from fighting off bacteria. You need your mouth to fight off the bacteria because if it's not fighting bacteria, it can cause periodontal disease, and which she spoke about periodontal disease is inflammation of the gums and uh, which can lead to a uh, Periodontitis, so the gingivitis, and then it can lead on periodontitis. Mm -hmm. So the vapors that are released can cause your gums to swell, and they can eventually lead to tissue damage. And um, your tissues, your gum tissue can die, okay? So it can cause your mouth and throat to become dry. A dry mouth leads to cavities. Nobody wants cavities, okay? So that's the most reported side effect is, you know, having a dry mouth after vaping. So, um, and like I said, the dry mouth, it leads to your tooth. And what the cake is, is when the tooth breaks down. The hardest surface on the tooth is the enamel, and it'll break down, causing your, um, your, the other layers of your teeth to be exposed, because the bacteria will eat through your enamel and all the layers of your teeth. All right, so gum 
lung inflammation and bleeding are two signs of gum disease, which I mentioned gingivitis and periodontitis. Bleeding gums are unhealthy gums, okay? So if your gums bleed, you have gingivitis and flossing can help get rid of that gingivitis, okay? Um, the use of nicotine can make it more difficult for a dentist to identify gum disease. It's best that gum disease be diagnosed as early as possible, because if not, it can, uh, can progress into something that's worse than irreversible. Gingivitis is reversible. Periodontitis is irreversible. Periodontitis is when you start losing your bones, okay? All right, so here's some vacant statistics um, from your age group. While smoking has decreased among teens, overall tobacco use has remained steady. It's because vaping has become common. And I see a lot, a lot of people vaping nowadays than I do, um, well, kids your age, I see them vaping more than smoking cigarettes. And like I said, they think it's a healthier option and it's not, okay? So more than three million middle and high school students used e-cigarettes or vaporizers in 2015. That's a lot. And it was up from 2.5 million in 2014. So that's not good at all. All right, so in 2015, e-cigarettes were the most commonly used tobacco product. Because like I said, they're vaping, but it still has tobacco in it. So it does not make it a better option. All right, so that was found in middle school and high school students for the second straight year. In 2011, less than two in 100 high school students said they had used e-cigarettes, vaporizers, hookahs, um, all that, all the pens, um, any type of pen that you're getting from the store. Um, and then by 2015, 16 out of 100 students had um, been vaping. So. All right, so we're gonna go to this video here. You can click on that. It won't let me. So um, while we're getting this video pulled up, so what this video is explaining is peri periodontal disease, which is what we're trying to prevent. Um, the earlier you know about periodontal disease is the best way to prevent it, because it's a lot of things when you go to the dentist, you won't learn everything, so that's why we're here to educate you. soft tissue around the necks of the teeth where they emerge through the gums. Healthy gingiva or pink periodontal disease begins in the gingival sulcus, a cup of soft tissue around the necks of the teeth where they emerge through the gums. Healthy gingiva or pink in color and the sulcus depth ranges from zero to three millimeters measured from the tip of the gingival margin to the base of the sulcus. The attachment fibers connecting the gums to the teeth and the teeth to the bone are intact. The gums are resilient and neither bleed nor hurt when being probed. During meals, food debris accumulates in the sulcus. When mixed with mouth bacteria and proteins from saliva, plaque and less obvious biofilm are formed. Both are harmful to teeth and periodontal structures. Left in place on the teeth, bacterial plaque and biofilm begin to mineralize, forming hardened deposits called calculus, which can only be removed with dental instruments. In response to the increased bacteria adjacent to the soft gingiva, the body sends immune cells and healing cells to the area by way of the circulation. The increased blood flow to the gingiva produces red, enlarged, and tender gum tissues, a reversible condition known as gingivitis, in which the periodontal attachment fibers remain intact. Continuous exposure to acids and enzymes from plaque bacteria and the body's immune response to them eventually causes the periodontal attachment to be lost, an irreversible condition known as periodontitis. The sulcus depth increases to the point where the patient can no longer effectively remove plaque, leading to the destruction of tooth supporting bone. Smoking impairs blood flow and can significantly interfere with the patient's ability to fight the bacterial infection. Other factors may be involved. Generalized periodontitis affects all of the teeth. This they is a gum recession. They are unnaturally about. long and unattractive and may ultimately be lost. When multiple back teeth are lost, 
The front teeth may be unable to support closing forces of the jaw muscles. They begin to tip and move. The cheeks begin to collapse inward where the back teeth are missing, and the lack of proper support for the jaw joints may cause them to ache, pop, and click. Periodontal bacteria can enter the body's circulatory system through leaky blood vessels. Once inside, the bacteria can lead to blood clots and inflamed vessels, which constrict in diameter, leading to strokes, heart disease, heart attacks, and poor circulation in the extremities. So periodontal disease is a real threat, not only to your oral cavity, but to the rest of your body as well. Okay, and so this is an example of someone who smokes and does not go to their dentist, that their hygienist clean their teeth. Um, I've actually cleaned patients that have this on their teeth. So it's not something that's really rare. This is a very common finding in the dental office for smokers. Um, so the best way to avoid having this kind of a mouth is to just don't smoke. It's a really bad habit. It's hard to kick. Don't, don't get involved with it. Um, you should brush twice daily. Brush in the mornings and brush in the evenings. And it's really important for you to brush your teeth in the evenings before you go to bed because while you're laying there sleeping, all those bacteria that you miss or if you don't brush your teeth, they're just building and building and it's increasing your risk for cavities um, and periodontal disease. So the way that we wanna brush is called the modified BATS method and we'll walk around and show you in just a moment. And what you're gonna do is you're going to take your toothbrush and you're gonna hold the bristles up to your gums at a 45 degree angle. You're gonna jiggle it along the, along the gum line so it's getting right underneath that gingival margin to get all those bacteria out, and then you're gonna swoop it down. So a lot of you probably learned how to brush your teeth with the circle method, right? Is that how you usually do it? Okay, well you wanna do it like this to get all the bacteria out from underneath your gum lines. So I'm gonna put this down and come around and we'll show you. you're going to want to floss every day because what happens is your teeth are getting brushed and those brushes are getting all those areas on the surfaces of your teeth like on the facial surface and on the lingual surfaces of your teeth but what's happening is those areas where those teeth are touching all that bacteria is able to build up in between them so even though you may be brushing twice a day you're not getting all of that bacteria out because it's hiding in approximately in between those teeth so what you want to do is called the C-shaped method. When you get your floss out, you get it out to about shoulder width, like this. You hold it, you pinch it in between your middle finger, you roll it up on your middle finger, and as you're going through your 
your mouth, you're unrolling it onto your other finger so that you're not getting bacteria from one part of the mouth to the other part. Ms. Tamika was gonna show you. So you see how I have a little on this one and you wanna line the rest on this one. So when you start flossing, the dirt, this is the dirty side. So once you floss the tooth, you're gonna put it on this side, you're gonna get some new floss. When you do it again, you're gonna put it on this side and get some new floss, okay? Because if you're using the same piece of floss, you're taking bacteria from one tooth and putting it on the next tooth, okay? So you always wanna use a different piece. And that's why we say make it shoulder width, that'll give you enough to get through your entire mouth, okay? And so whenever you have that floss ready, you wanna gently wiggle it back and forth till it's getting down in between your teeth. So what she's going to do is she's putting those teeth, and we'll turn so that you all can see as well. So she's putting the floss in between the teeth very gently. You don't want to snap it in because you could cut your gums, and that's very uncomfortable. And when she gets that floss down, then she wants to wiggle it up and down on the tooth in a C shape, which means that floss is hugging the tooth, so it's getting all of that bacteria. And you want to do the close portion of the tooth, and you want to do the tooth that's beside it as well at the same time, so you're getting both parts of the bacteria um, clean. Okay? Alright, so um, what this is is a C-shaped method. Okay, so when you're flossing, when you're flossing, you want to form a C, okay? So make sure you wrap it around your finger. You want to form a C around the tooth. You want to make sure you're getting underneath the gum line because you want to get everything that the toothbrush didn't get. So don't assume that your toothbrush got everything because flossing really helps. You want to um, prevent that gingivitis, okay? So this is a C. It's going to create a C around the tooth. So you're just going to wiggle, wiggle, and then you're going to turn around and go to the next tooth while you're already in there, and then you come out. You'll go to the next tooth, do the same thing. So you want to create that C. That C is going to make sure that you get every interproximal surface. The interproximal surface is the surface in between the tooth, so you make sure you get that.
the bacteria will build up on there and it'll just be really gross. You know, she was talking about hairy tongue for people who smoke. That's bacteria that just have a party and you do not want that in your mouth. Um, to commute mouth rinses, to um, eliminate some of those bacteria, some of those harmful bacteria in your mouth. Um, whenever you do use your mouth rinse, you don't want to rinse with water afterwards. I know sometimes, like I'm really bad about rinsing with water after I use mouth rinse because it's just, it's really, is it warm? It's, it's a really strong flavor and it's not very comfortable always. Um, but for it to work the most effectively, you want to not rinse with water afterwards. Um, some other things that can cause staining on your teeth is if you have like retentative factors. So that's like if your enamel is really soft. Um, Maria here, she was born without enamel. And so she had gold caps on all of her teeth when she was younger, but now she's an adult and her teeth are, are fine. But it increases your chances for having to have staining on your teeth. Um, my enamel is a little bit bumpy, and so I have a tendency to hold stain. So I was talking um, with some of these guys up front about you know the snacks and the things that you eat that also cause stain. You know, you go to the cafeteria, you just like the pizza, have a Coke, and go to your next class. All that sugar is still sitting on your teeth. So what you want to do is rinse your mouth out with water or drink some water. Um, but there are certain times that you don't want to brush. Does anyone know when you would not want to brush? Right after you eat? You would not want to brush right after you eat acidic, sugary food. Do you know why? Because it's enamel in your mouth. Okay, so the enamel in your teeth is the hardest substance in your body. And what happens is those sugars sit on your teeth and they start to form plaque and biofilm. So within two to four minutes after you brush your teeth, that slimy substance is already all over your teeth again. And it's a protective factor that your body does to prevent your teeth from getting cavities. The proteins in your saliva protect it from getting cavities, but it also makes them um, hold bacteria more sometimes. Um, the foods that you eat when they're acidic, that starts to wear on your enamel. So just like battery acid would, you know, it starts to break it down, okay? And you don't want that to happen. So if you get all of that food that's really acidic, you're eating and drinking it and it's sitting on your teeth and you go and you brush with a with a scrubby brush, it's just gonna cause grooves in your teeth and make them more prone to have cavities and more bacteria build up. So because smoking is the number one risk factor for developing oral cancer, it's important to know what signs to look for. So if you or someone you know smokes, um, it's they need to be aware of what oral cancer looks like um, because it can be very deadly and it can it can progress very quickly. So you want to check for red or white lesions. If there's sore spots that don't go away within two weeks, then you need to go and see a doctor. Um, if their lymph nodes are swollen on their neck and their mouth, you have lymph nodes here, you have lymph nodes underneath your jaw, you have a lot of lymph nodes in your head and neck. And so if you notice that your lymph nodes are swollen, um, you need to watch for that. Um, spontaneous bleeding. If your teeth bleed when you brush, or um, not when you brush necessarily, but if someone comes up to you and they open their mouth or they smile and you see blood trickling down their teeth, that's not normal, okay? They need to go and get some help. <laughs> okay, rough patches. Um, some people, when they smoke, they'll have like burns and things on their lip and it'll be really rough. Um, and you need to be really careful because that can also progress into cancer. People that have difficulty chewing, swallowing, speaking, or moving their tongue. Um, those can be signs of someone who is developing oral cancer. So the way you want to check is you want to get a light and you want to check the roof of your mouth. You want to check your tonsils in the back and your pillars, your soft palate. You want to check underneath your tongue. You want to check the size of your tongue. This is the most common site for oral cancer is on the size of your tongue. So the way you check for this is you'll get a gauze and you'll sling the tongue in it and you'll pull it out and it feels real funny and it looks really awkward but it's necessary and you pull it to one side and you look all the way back and you look on the other side and look all the way back and you check for those red spots, those white spots. Um, 
it just it looks really awful if you ever do see it. It's very unfortunate. You also want to check the borders inside your mouth. So right here in the buccal mucosa is what we call the um, the skin kind of that's on the inside of your mouth. You want to check there. You want to check underneath the um, on the top and the bottom. And then you want to check your lips to make sure that you don't have any kind of spots or things showing on your lips and also inside of your cheeks. Does anyone have questions? Mm -hmm. I should. Yes. Don't y'all think it's, it's nasty when you're in the cheeks all day? <laughs> no, it's amazing. It's actually really, <laughs> it's really rewarding to have someone who comes in with these kind of conditions and know that we can help them because they're there because they're wanting to improve their oral care and improve their health. So just like if you have someone who comes into a nurse's room or someone who goes to the doctor because they have a broken bone and the doctor, it might be a really gross situation where bone's sticking out, but they know that they can help that person. And so it's really rewarding. I know your teacher can attest to that. Um, we have, a, do you have any more questions? Everybody should have at least one question. I'm sorry? Can you do it, Miss Collins? She's going to edit it anyway. So we're going to show you a picture of an oral cavity, and we want you to tell us what kind of smoke causes tobacco, cannabis, or bacon, okay? All right, so just hold your sign up. So what do you think caused this? Cigarettes. <laughs> All right. Tobacco. Good job. All right, so we got another one. What do you think caused this? Ooh. Yes, break 
Thank you. 